everyone, I found this graph from the European correspondent and I really liked it. I thought they did a really nice job of taking what is often presented as a long, tall bar chart and puts them together. So it's more of a square chart. I just really like the approach. I thought it's really smart and I want to see if I can create it in Excel. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's head over to the graph. Okay, so this is a graph of the age of motherhood. It's showing the difference of first time mothers from the European average. So there's two variables showing here. It's that difference, that, that age difference, and also showing the change from 2014 using color. So that green is stable and blue has increased by one or more year, I guess, I guess one or more years. So the first thing I wanna show you is how people I think would mostly create this graph. Head over to the raw data here. Ignore these columns for a second, or come back in a second. So columns A and B is just our data. I'm gonna insert a bar chart here, and I'll just make it tall so you can see it. Now, I don't love the way Excel sort of flips my data, right? I have the data order from positive to negative. This flips it. I have a little VBA script here. This little arrow here is just gonna flip it for me. But if you don't have that button, which you might probably don't, um, you can just right click on your axis, go to format and go over to the bar chart and just say categories in reverse order. So pretty easy to switch. Now, if you wanna add the green and blue bars, you could do that manually. There's not a ton of bars here, so you could do that manually, but I have a better way. So take a look over here. Column C differentiates, puts the two makes the two groups. So the green group and the blue group. So that's all it's doing. Then I have a little if statement here that says if cell C2 is equal to one. So if it's in the green group, let's just call it the green group, then give me the value. And if it's not, give me the number zero. Okay. And then next door, it says if it's in, let's go down to Ireland, which is going to be in our blue group. If group is equal to two, give me the value, if not give me zero. So what I have here, the sum of these, each of these uh, values in each row, sum of E and F is gonna equal column B. Now, if I create this graph, not as a bar chart, but as a stacked bar chart, like so, make it tall again and flip the axis again, you can see that I've got my green series here automatically. So I just go in, obviously I have to change my colors, make those green and make these blue. And now I've got my chart all set. But this is the way most people would create it, but I like the way the European correspondent did it, where they basically took these kind of two halves and placed them next to each other. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go over to my V1 tab. So this is the unformatted version of the chart right here. And as you can see, all this is going to be is a couple of stacked bar charts. I say a couple of stacked bar charts, because I actually want to include these stripes that go across the chart. Now, there's some conversation on LinkedIn that these uh, stripes maybe sort of imply that, you know, we're, we're, we're looking across this graph that somehow, you know, Spain and Czechia or Switzerland and Hungary are linked. I don't view it that way. I just view it as a nice way to just help organize the space a little bit. This is, you know, obviously a style decision. I'll, I'll delete the, the color there and you can decide whether it's cleaner or not this way. I like it with the bar, so I'm gonna leave the bar on and I'm gonna show you how to create it with the bar on. Now, the stripe bar causes a problem uh, because uh, you need to organize the chart putting all of these bars we're gonna use on two different axes because I want the stripe bars to sit behind my data bars. And so what I need to do is put the stripe bars on the primary axis and my data bars on the secondary axis. Okay, so there's a lot of complication there. Don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna handle it. So let's take a look at what I've got in my data. So I've got the countries here, the positive countries over here in column A, and the values for the negative countries uh, the negative value countries over here in column I. So those are the two data values. I've just split it up and here are my labels. Here are my labels here. So B, I, and M, uh, A, B, I, and M are my data. Then what I wanna do, so that's gonna be, let's just say the orange series here. Then I wanna add the labels. Now in a stack bar chart, Excel won't you place the label outside the bar, it only can go inside the bar. But the original has the label outside the bar. So I'm gonna add a new segment to just hold on to the labels. And that's gonna be this value label series. Then I want to left align the country labels. Let me show you again the, the original. 
Notice how the country labels are all aligned here. So to get a nice left alignment, and that's going to be the purple series where I'm going to add my values, I need to take, I need to add a blue series that's going to generate that nice vertical line. Then I'm going to mirror this. I'm going to have a segment for the country labels on the right. I'm going to have a thing to fill it up. I'm going to have a series for the labels, and then I'm going to have the actual data. So there's a lot going on here. But once it's organized, it's relatively easy to create, just actually going to be a lot of clicking. So let's grab all of the data. I'm going to grab from value all the way to band three, and I'm going to insert a stacked bar chart. And so this is going to be my chart. This is how it's going to start. And you can see there's a lot going on here. Now, remember what I want is the bands one, two, and three to be on the primary axis and the data, all the other things to be on the secondary axis. And this is a little annoying. I have to do this manually. So I'm just going to start selecting each series here. And in the format series, I'm just going to push this over to the secondary axis. Now, as you can see, now the scales are off. So the charts are all unaligned. Uh, we'll fix that in a moment. I'm not going to worry about it now. I just got to get things moved over. So I'm going to go to the Format tab, and I'm just going to start selecting each one of these and just pushing them over to the secondary axis. So it's just drop down, drop down, drop down. It's actually quite nice because once it's moved to the secondary axis, it moves, moves the, the, the series name moves to the bottom of the, of the menu. So I can just see where I am. I just need to keep making my way down this list. Value, and I think I have one more value label, and I need to move that over. Okay, now I'm getting really close. Now it still looks a little squirrely here, and that's because my horizontal and vertical axes are not aligned. So I need to do a couple of things here. First, we need to turn on our secondary vertical axis because we want to make sure that these things are all lined up. So I'm just going to go over to add chart element and add my secondary vertical. Okay, so these are all lined up as a moment. Let's change these. I'm just going to go from 0 to 30. Why 30? Because I know that the sum of all of my data is going to equal 30. That's what this check series is doing. So I, I know I'm going to go to 30. And I need to change this one as well. So 0 to 30. I also want to flip both, both vertical axes, so categories in the vertical. And I need to do it here. Make sure you're doing both spots so everything's aligned. Before we start playing around with the data, let's do the striping. So I am just want to grab my band series. I'll just grab the first one. And I'm going to make the, the width between the series just 20%. It's going to be really small. So you can see that those bands got quite big. And I'm going to change the, change the color here. So... I will go down here, change my color. I think it's that one. And I also need to do the endpoints as well. Let's make sure we do all the bands. There we go. All right, very good. We're getting there. Okay, now we get to format our bars. So here again, remember this, this first series is the data series. I'm going to make this green. I'm actually not going to worry about the blue-green distinction right now. I have done that, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because I wanted to just keep this as simple as possible. So I'm going to make this other one green as well. Okay, so I've got that. Let's add these labels here. So for this orange series, I'm going to add data labels. And once those are added, I'm going to select those labels, right-click, format the data labels, and over here, I'll just say value from cells, and I just want the value. And so I'm just going to grab that value and click OK. And I'll turn off the value, and I'll put that inside the end, right adjacent to the green bars. Let's do the same thing over here. So let's add the data labels. I'm going to have to move my chart here. Let's add those data labels. Let's, again, label options, value from cells. Let's grab the values down here, right, turn off the value inside the end, uh, inside the base in this case, because I want it on the other side. Let's actually turn off the fill on these, on these bars. And if you can't quite grab them because the, um, the numbers are in the way, the labels are in the way, just go to your format menu. And let's turn the uh, fill off. So I don't want any fill there. And I'm gonna have to do the same thing over here. Value label, 
I think over here, there we go. Let's turn that fill off. Great. I also don't need the fill on these two series. So let's turn that series off. Let's turn this series off. Now let's add our labels for the countries. So I'm going to select my blue bars, add data labels, doing the same thing. I'm going to select, I'm going to go value from cells and grab my countries. Very nice. Turn off the value. And here again, I want them inside the base so that they are left aligned. And I'll go over here to the purple, add data labels. Takes that a second because I've got a lot going on here. Let's value from cells. I've got my country sitting right here. That's why they're here. So I have them in this table because I want to have them for the labels. Turn the value off and this case inside the end. So it depends on the, on the direction of whether you want end or a uh, base. Let's turn off these colors. No fill, no fill. And we are super close at this point. So let's do a few other things to clean this up. Let's start turning off our axes. Now I tend to turn off my axes rather than deleting because sometimes when you delete, it undoes stuff. So I'm just gonna say no labels there. And over here, I'm going to say tick marks, none and labels, none. And over here, I'm gonna do the same thing, no labels and no tick marks. And down at the bottom, I'm also going to say uh, no tick marks and no labels. And I could actually leave part of my legend here if I wanna do the color, which I can do later. I won't do it right now, I'll just delete this. And so you can see now, I've got this chart set up. I'm gonna get rid of those Grid lines, I don't really want them here because they weren't in the original. So we'll just do that and click delete and they are gone. Whoops, that deletes the whole chart. Here we go. Got that. Let's make the, let's do the font. We're probably using something like Times New Roman. Make all that a little bit bigger. Let's make these labels a little bit smaller. 10.5 looks good. We can change the color to a gray, something like that. Same thing over here, make it smaller, make it gray. Let's change the, I won't bother with the title today. Let's change the background. I've already, already got these colors in here. Change the background a little bit to match what's going on over here. And now we have our chart. And so we can make these bars maybe a little thicker if we want, 70%, oh, probably okay. And if that's, um, if you want to make these even bigger, so you could even make this 10%, make them a little, little, little bigger. I mean, we could even go because we have gaps between the the um, the countries. We could even make that uh, a zero, so that we fill up that whole space. So as you can see, I now pretty much match, which is what's in the original graph. Now, here's the last thing. So two last things I'll note. First off, you notice that Bosnia and Herzegovina here overlaps. You can fix that by just extending the text box over, there we go. Just extend, there we go, fine, we're good here. You'll notice I didn't add the mean or the plus two years. The way I would typically do that is to add a scatter plot and then add error bars that go down. And there's two issues with that in Excel. One, because we have a stack bar chart on two axes, I actually can't add a scatter plot. So that's a decision point. So if I wanted to have these labels of mean plus two years plus minus four years, et cetera, et cetera, I wouldn't be able to add the stripes. The other thing that happens is when I use that approach, that technique of adding the error bars, which if you're curious how to do that, just check out some other videos on this, on this channel. I'm sure I've done it somewhere. The error bars sit on top of the bars and I don't really love that. So I'm not gonna include that here, but I've got the core of the chart all set up and then you can start to play around with spacing. If you want more space in between here, you could just change some of the spacing in the chart or in the data. So that's how you create this chart from the European correspondent. If you haven't checked them out, I recommend you should. You can. Uh, they've got some good data viz coming out uh, in most of the newsletters. I get it every day, uh, especially if you want to learn more about Europe. I am more into the data viz, but you can see what they are doing. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you check out more. Make sure you check out my Flourish tutorials to learn how to create more graphs in that data visualization tool. So thanks for tuning in. Let me know how it went for you and I'll see you next time.